welcome my brothers and sisters in the Lord throughout the Caribbean region. Uh, my granddad who is watching in Trinidad, we welcome you to the service this morning. And our prayer is that this word today would challenge your life in a very special way. And that in some way you would find, you will see the need to serve Jesus more. Amen. Turn with me in the Word of God to Romans chapter 8. Romans chapter 8 and verse 28. And then we'll jump to Genesis chapter 1. Romans 8, 28 and then Genesis chapter 1. Romans 8, 28, and this morning I'm going to read from the Amplified Bible. This is what it says. We are assured and know that God being a partner in their labor, all things work together and are fitting into a plan for good to and for those who love God and are called according to his design and purpose. I'll read it again. We are assured and know that God being a partner in their labor, all things work together and are fitting into a plan for good to and for those who love God and are called according to his design and his purpose. Genesis chapter 1. Genesis chapter 1 and verse 1. Genesis 1 and verse 1. This is the word of the Lord today. Again from the Amplified Bible. In the beginning, God prepared, he formed, he fashioned, and created the heavens and the earth. In the beginning, God, he prepared, he formed, fashioned, and created the heavens and the earth. In the beginning, God. Sovereign in the mountain air, sovereign on the ocean floor, with me in the camp, with me in the storm. Sovereign in my greatest joy, sovereign in my deepest cry, with me in the dark with me at the dawn in your everlasting arms all the pieces of my life from beginning to the end i can trust you in your never failing love you work God, whatever comes my way, I will trust you. He's sovereign in the mountain air, sovereign on the ocean floor, with us in the camp. He's with us in the storm, sovereign in our greatest joy, sovereign in our deepest cry with us in the dark he's with us in the dawn in your everlasting arms all the pieces of my life from beginning to the end i can trust you in your name my way 
I can trust you. God, whatever comes my way, I will trust you. God, whatever comes my way, I will trust you. I will trust you. God is sovereign this morning. Sovereign in the mountain air and sovereign on the ocean floor. He's with us in the calm and he's with us in the storm. In the deepest, darkest moments of our lives, God is there. In his never failing love, God is working everything for our good. Ah, God, whatever, 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 whatever comes our way, we're going to trust him. We're going to trust him. We're going to trust him. Hey, it is a powerful thing to trust God. Trust God. Trust God. Father, this morning as we go into your word, Lord, we declare you as God in this house. We declare that you are Lord, you are sovereign, you are God. And Father, for those this morning that may be going through the storm, for those who may be in the dark places, Lord, we thank you today for revealing yourself as God in the calm and God at the dawn. Lord, in your everlasting love today, we are assured that all things are working together for our good because you are God. We give you praise today in Jesus' name. And the body of Christ says, Amen. 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 This morning I want to speak for just a few moments on the simple yet powerful yet profound subject, God. 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 Just God. This is the subject this morning. Just a few weeks ago I would have opened a book and began reading and at the opening of this book, there was a question that was presented to me as I began to read. And the question was, what comes into your mind when you think of God? What comes into your mind when you begin to think about God? The book was written by A.W. Tozer. Well, I mean, he presented me with a question right at the beginning. So I really couldn't go any further. I began to shut the book and I began to ponder. And as I was studying God, I went right back to the beginning. Genesis chapter 1, verse 1. In the beginning, God. In the beginning, God. We must understand today that before, before we were, God was. Before we were, God was. And God still is. The Bible declares this morning that God prepared, he formed, he fashioned the earth and the heavens. We must understand today that when the earth was without form, God gave it form. We must know today that when the earth was covered with darkness, this God gave it light. When the earth was without vegetation, God gave it vegetation. When there was no water, God provided water. But it was in this same time of God being God that God began to consider and Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, they began to, to, to reason together and think together and they said, let us make man in our own image and in our likeness. So it was this God who fashioned creation that thought about you. It was this God who was the beginning God, in the beginning God. It was him who decided to give us eyes to see and give us ears to hear and a mind to think, a body to be able to move. And you understand this God from the very beginning was working in our lives. God is God. And we must understand today that this God that we're speaking about deposited something of himself in us. He deposited something of himself in us. Let us make man in our image, in our likeness. And if I get it right, I would say that any good bank that you deposit into, 
you can use what's in your account. So this morning, God says, I've deposited in you some of me. And what you can do today is you can use the power and the dominion and the authority and the rule in the earth. This God that is, uh, he, he, he created us and he fashioned us. This God has given us some of himself. The book of Acts declares it this way, that we live, we move, and we have our being in God. We live in him. We breathe because of God. Outside of God, we would have no breath. But today, this God that I speak of is not, you know, one of the gods that are made of copper and bronze and tin. He is a God. The songwriter said, every other God is an idol. They cannot see, they cannot hear. Well, the good news today is that this God that we're serving, he can see and he can hear. And this God is moving in the lives of his people. God, God, this God. Let us begin to think about what do we think of when we, we think of God. This God that we serve today has been moving through time and moving through history in such a powerful way. This God today, the Bible declares that his eyes have been looking through the earth and they're going back and forth looking into the heart of man. This God, this God that I speak of today, no ordinary God, but the in the beginning God. You see, we must make a clear distinction today because many people will bring this God and that God and another God. But we speak today of in the beginning God. That is the God that was before anything was. He is God. He is God. And as we begin to look through history and we, we go back for just a moment to see what God has done, we begin to look at the life of Noah. Noah was a man who was righteous in the earth. The word declared that he was a righteous man. He and his family, they served the Lord. But we must understand that where righteousness was, wickedness tried to prevail. So the wickedness began to fill the earth. But in the midst of this, God said, I want to save my righteous people. I want to save them. I want to make sure that they're going to be all right. And God came up with a plan because he's God. And he began to say to Noah, build a boat. You're going to put a remnant of every living thing on the inside of this boat so that when the waters flood the earth, you're going to be okay. You're going to be all right. What is it that we can learn today from the life of Noah? We don't have to be fooled today. The God that sees us as righteous, he sees wickedness as well, but he has a plan to redeem his people. Hallelujah. He has a plan to redeem his people. As we continue through history, we come upon Moses and the Israelites. Moses and the Israelites. We understand this morning that the Israelites, they were an enslaved people. They were held up under Pharaoh's rule, the rule of the Egyptians. But we must also know today that even though they were enslaved, they were, they were given a way of passage. They were let go to go on their way. And this God uh, orchestrated such a path so that his power, his glory, and his might would be revealed. So as the Israelites and Moses, they approached the Red Sea. They approached the Red Sea and they began to say, well, hey, uh, you know, some of them even said it would be better if we go back, if we don't go any further. But Moses said, no, 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 it shall not be so. This was Moses' declaration. Do not be afraid. Stand firm and see the deliverance of the Lord. This God he will bring you. We must understand today that the word of God declared that as Moses lifted his rod, the God that formed them, the God that fashioned them, the God that called them, he opened the Red Sea. What am I saying today? There may be an enemy behind you and there may be a sea before you, but this God that we serve, he will make a way. He will open up the seas for you so that you can go through. You see, we're learning about God, his power, his... We talk about the supernatural. This is supernatural. How could water open unless God open it? That is the supernatural. But as we begin to move through history, 
the Bible speaks of a man by the name of Joshua. Joshua we call one of the greater leaders of the Old Testament. He took over from Moses' leadership and there came a point where God, uh, God said, hey, you're going to take the city of Jericho. You're going to take the city of Jericho. But this seemed like a great impossibility. But how many of you know this morning that what seems impossible with man is very possible with God? So God gave a strategy. He said, hey, if we're going to take the walls down and we're going to get in the city, we're going to tell you, Joshua, to get the armed men to walk around once each day for six days around the wall. And as they began every day doing as God instructed, they came upon the seventh day. And it was on the seventh day that God would have instructed that as they go to lift up a shout, to lift up a praise, to lift up a declaration. And at their declaration, at their praise, the walls came tumbling down. I want to let you know this morning that just like Joshua and the men of, of God, they saw the walls falling. Today, if there is a wall in your life, you can see every wall. The songwriter said, see what the Lord has done for us. See what a mighty God he is. Walls are tumbling, walls are tumbling, walls are tumbling down. So let's praise his holy name. Whatever your wall today, be assured that God has the power, the ability, the might to take every wall down. If it is walls of sickness, if it is walls of depression, if it is walls of suicide, God is available today. And at your shout, at your declaration, every wall must come down. Hallelujah. 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 Let's continue through history because God wasn't finished yet. We continue and we see that there was a man by the name of David. David loved the Lord. He served God. The word says that he was a man after God's own heart. But this David found himself in the midst of, well, what some would say, one of the easiest battles of all time. Because this David recognized that the Philistine army had stood against the Lord. And this was his declaration. He said, who is this Philistine army that he should defy the armies of this God? We must understand today that no power can defeat our God. So David rose to the challenge. David said, well, I'm going to step in and take it. And this was what David said, you come against me with the sword and with the spear and with the javelin, but I come against you in the name of the Lord God Almighty. This God that David served, this in the beginning God that we're talking about today, he has the power, he has the ability to destroy every giant in your life. Elder, I'll tell you, giants do die. The bigger they are, the harder they're going to fall. Come on. Every giant today must come down. Why? Because this God that we serve is a God of great power and strength. God, 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 in the beginning God, in the beginning God, not a deaf God, not a blind God, but a God that sees, a God that hears, a God that is attuned to the lives of his people. This God today is who we're talking about. We continue through history this morning and we see the three Hebrew boys. Well, the three Hebrew boys, they were faced with, you see, we're just doing a little history for a moment. They were faced with a challenge. And that is that as they served God with all their heart, the king Nebuchadnezzar, he had decided to build a monument. And he declared that everyone must bow before this idol that was prepared. But the three Hebrew boys said, well, no, because our heart, our allegiance is given to God. So because they denied bowing before the idols that were made by hands, the God of all power stepped in. Because these men were thrown into, the Bible says, the fire, the fiery furnace. They were thrown in, and interesting enough, it was turned seven times hotter. These men, well, they could have for a moment have gotten afraid. 
but they knew that this God that they served from the beginning, he was the God that was with them. So when they looked to their side, there he was standing in the midst of the fire. I want to encourage you this morning, whatever fire you're going through, whatever furnace, if it got hotter over the week, God is with you in the midst of your fiery furnace. Ah, be assured today, what can we learn from the Hebrew boys? We can learn today that if we stay true to God, this God, the in the beginning God, He will stay true to us. Let me say that again. If we stay true to this God, the in the beginning God, He will stay true to us. Come on, in the beginning God. He will stay true to us. But let's move through history. We ain't done yet. We come upon the man named Daniel. Daniel was a man who loved God. The Bible said he had great integrity. He served God with everything within him. But you see, sometimes when we're giving God our everything and God is moving in our lives, people will get jealous of us. They will begin to envy us. And we understand that because of the jealousy that came up because of Daniel's hard work, they, the, the men within the high place, the government where Daniel was working, they decided, hey, we're going to work something. So they worked with the king and they made a decree that for 30 days, no one was to pray. But Daniel said, no, 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 no. This in the beginning God, he's been too good to me. He's been too faithful to me. He's been right by me every step of the way. So the word of God declares that Daniel, he prayed three times a day. Even when he was opposed, he stood in the face of opposition. I want to encourage you today that when you're being opposed for God, don't bow beneath it. Keep standing because the story gets better. Daniel, because he refused to bow, before, because he refused to submit himself to opposition, the word declares that he was thrown in the lion's den. But when the king who felt bad for Daniel went to find him, this is what Daniel said, my God, this God, the in the beginning God, he has shut the mouths of the lions. He sent his angels so that the lions can do me no harm. What can we learn from Daniel this morning? We can learn that when we stick by God, there is a reward that comes. There is a blessing that comes with our assignment. We can stand with God. And in the midst of lions and tigers and jaguars, we can be all right. Because this in the beginning God, he is right there with us. Come on, build your faith this morning. We're going somewhere. We're going somewhere. The Bible says to tell of the wonders of God. So we're telling this morning. We're telling this morning of the wonders of God. All of the things that God would have done throughout history. We must understand today that this God is not no easy God. He can't be blown up. He can't be overthrown. Come on, we can't tear him down. We can't get bulldozers and push him over. Hey, this God today, he is the in the beginning God. And the Bible declares that no foe can withstand him. He is a refuge and a fortress. No snare, no fowler, no pestilence can overthrow him. The Bible declares that his truth is a shield. His faithfulness is a buckler. The Bible declares that his angels, he has given them a special charge over us to defend us, to accompany us, and to preserve us. Well, I mean, you thought for a moment that when you stepped out into the road and the car nearly hit you, you went away home saying, well, listen, the car nearly hit me. It wasn't a nearly hit me. It was the angels of the Lord. They were right there with you. Why? Because God has given the angels a special charge over your life. Come on. Hallelujah. The Bible declares that he is a deliverer of those who love him. Is there anyone in the house today that loves God? 
Is there anyone that loves God? Is there anyone that loves God? Well, hey, you are a candidate for deliverance. You will stand and see the deliverance of the Lord. You will stand and see the walls tumble down. You will see the mouths of every lion shut. Why? Because you love God. Hey, he will deliver those who love him. We also understand from the word of God that this God, this God, this God, he will be the answer to all who call upon him. He will be the answer. Uh, I never said that he's going to find an answer. Or he's going to try and make up an answer. I'm saying this morning that this God, he is the answer. He is the answer. But you know where we miss it? We fail to call upon him. Come on. I don't know if you've got it yet, but I'm, I'm, I'm taking my pointer straight from Psalm 91. The Bible says that as we call upon the Lord, He will answer. He will answer. What is the song? What a friend we have in Jesus. All our sins and griefs to bear. Finish it for me because I ain't so good. Everything to God in prayer. Oh, what needless. What peace we often forfeit. Oh, what needless pain we bear, all because we do not carry everything to God in prayer. We must understand today that if we call upon the name of the Lord, we will receive an answer. We will receive an answer because God is the answer. Come on. You see, when men were, man was all torn up and destroyed and weak, God didn't look down and say, well, let me try and figure something out. But God said, I'm going to come through the 40 and two generations. And I'm going to come myself and redeem this people. He is the answer, the answer, the answer. The word also declares that this God is a giver of long life. He's a giver of long life. He's a giver of long life. You can be assured of a long life. Come on, somebody. Long life in all of the fruitfulness. You see, listen. Let me put a little injection here. I really believe in all my heart that long life not only refers to years, but it includes that too. But long life is referring to the fruitful life, the abundant life. You see, my mommy, she died when I was only four, but I'm convinced she lived a long life. Why? Because she fulfilled purpose. That is long life. God will give you long life. But don't get afraid. Long life means years too. Long years. Many years. I got a granny somewhere there. 76 years old and she not stopping. Because she said God given her a long life. We must go with the understanding that this God. He is the giver of long life. Long life. Long life. One of the realities we must face today as we begin to pull it together is that this God that we're serving is the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. So this God, if he did it for Daniel, hey, he can do it for us. If he did it for Noah, he can do it for us. If he did it for the Hebrew boys, he can do it for us. If he did it for Joshua and the men around the wall of Jericho, he can do it for us today. The same God that worked all through history is the same God that is present in the house this morning. He's the in the beginning God. Let every other God be torn down in Jesus' name because this God we speak of today, he is the one true and the living God. Uh, my purpose today is to help build faith. Help build faith. Help build faith. You see, we can cry out, cry out, cry out for this, that, and the next. But if we don't understand God as the source of it, we've lost it. God, God, this God that we're serving today. The same way that God moved through history, He's ready to make history with you. 
He's ready to do some wonders and some glorious things and show you some of his might and his ability in your life so that you know the word says that we must be able to tell the generations of the wonders of God. If we do not serve a God that, that is going to do something, that is going to show his power, that is going to show his might, well, we are in a sad place. But we must understand today that this God we're serving is ready and willing to do things to show his glory, his power, his ability so that we can tell our children and our children's children of what God has done, what God is doing. We must tell of the wonders of the Lord. We must tell of the wonders of the Lord. We must tell, we must tell, we must tell of the wonders of the Lord. But as we move into this God, the in the beginning God who desires to work in our lives, to do something powerful in our lives, we must understand today that through his word we see that he manifests himself in various capacities. He's one God, but hey, there are many ways that he can show forth his power and his ability and his might. One of the ways that God manifests himself is as almighty. 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 Revelation chapter 1 verse 8 says that God is the almighty. God is the all-sufficient one. In him is all the power and the might. To be almighty is to hold might and strength, all of it, in your hands. Psalm 91 that we just went through, it declared that he that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. He is Almighty, Almighty in our lives, Almighty in our families, Almighty in our children, Almighty in our schools, Almighty in our workplaces. If you're seeing turmoil, if you're seeing torment, you're seeing circumstances that are beyond your control, this is the time to call upon God, the Almighty, the Almighty One that will stand in battle. The Word declares He's fighting for us, pushing back the darkness, the song says. The Almighty God, the Almighty God. We see through the Old Testament that the Almighty's strength in battle, it was praised. So we must praise Him when He works in the battle. We understand today that His ability to redeem us was praised. So we also must praise Him for His redemption. We see that His interest in the affairs of His people, humankind, it was always praised. So when God does something in your life, we must be willing to give Him all praise. All praise, lifting up our voice with a shout, declaring the praises of our King. Almighty, in your life he is almighty today. Whenever I face something, I call upon God the Almighty. Almighty God, that is declaring that I have no strength to fight it on my own. But Almighty God, he will take it for me. He will take it for me. God manifests himself as the Almighty. But God also manifests himself as our fortress. As our fortress. Our fortress. In the natural, a fortress is a, a, a building, a place that is fortified. In other words, no enemy can prevail. No thing that is not allowed can get in. We must understand today that when God declares that he is our fortress, we, we, we can shelter there. We can shelter there. I don't think you caught it. If God is our fortress, we can shelter in him. We can shelter in him. In other words, when the enemy tries, he cannot prevail. He may try with our health but he's not going to win. He may try with our children, but he cannot win. He may try with our spouses, but he cannot win. Why? Because I'm sheltering. I'm sheltering. I'm sheltering in God, my fortress. God, who is my all in all. 
The man Job. The man Job is one who understood God as his fortress. Right up in the beginning, we see how the enemy and, you know, the whole discourse. And he came and he said, well, hey, listen. What about if I look at your servant Job? And God said, well, try this and touch that and try the next. But I do not permit you to touch Job. You cannot touch my servant Job. I want to declare to you today that if you shelter up under God as your fortress, the enemy may try on every side. He may come in from behind. He may come in from the side, but he cannot touch you. He may be ahead of you, but in God, your fortress, he is going to keep you safe. He is going to keep you sound. God, your fortress. <laughs> the songs are coming to me. The songwriter said, the name of the Lord is a strong tower. The righteous run in to it, and they are saying, yeah. The name of the Lord is a strong tower. The righteous run in to it, and they are saying, God is our strong tower. Run into him today. You're feeling the fire, run to God. You're feeling the heat in your finances, run to God. You're feeling it in your children, run to God. Because he is God, our fortress. God, our shelter. It is my desire to look back when time is done on my last days and say it is God that kept me. It is God that kept me. No other God but this God, the in the beginning God, he kept me. God, our fortress. God, our fortress. Some of us need to be fortified today. We need to be fortified. We wonder why the enemy is coming in on every side. Get under the covering. We wonder why it is that he's tampering with our family. Get under the covering. Some of us need to shelter today. We're too exposed. We're too exposed. But God says today, get under, get under, get under God, your fortress. God, your fortress. God, your fortress. Hallelujah. God is a fortress. But God not only manifests himself as a fortress, he manifests himself as vindicator. Hey! Hey! Vindicator! Vindicator! Come on! To be vindicated means to be proved blameless, to be free of accusation. Come on! Some of us today need to acknowledge God, our vindicator. God, our vindicator. Psalm 26, David cried out, Vindicate me, O Lord. Vindicate me, O Lord. Some of us this morning, we need to throw our hands up and say, O God, vindicate me. Vindicate me, O God. Yeah, God is a vindicator. He is a vindicator. Now we know the reality of the matter is we've been some places and we've done some things that we should not have done and we should not have said and the world wants to hold it against us. But we, this is the point where we say, God, vindicate me. Vindicate me, oh God. He is God, our vindicator. For many of you sitting here today, you're sitting here and you're wondering, hey, they're talking about me. They're telling things that they shouldn't say. But God says today, I am your vindicator. I am your vindicator. When you're accused, vindicate me, O oh Lord. When you're lied on, vindicate me, O oh God. When you're misunderstood, vindicate me, O oh Lord. Oh, God is our vindicator. Come on.
Come on. Some of us need a whole lot of indicating. Yay. We've been some places. We've done some things. But God is your vindicator because you found your life in Christ. In Christ. In Christ. He's your vindicator today. He's your vindicator. He's your vindicator. You, I've learned in times when we need vindicating, keep your mouth shut. You don't have to say a thing because God is working. God is moving. God is fighting. He is the one that is saying, hey, he was, but now he isn't anymore. Vindicate me, oh God. Some of us run ourselves in so much trouble trying to excuse ourselves and get out of it and work it out. God says, let me be the vindicator. Hey, God is our vindicator this morning. Vindicate me, oh God. Vindicate me. Hallelujah. God is our vindicator today. Mm-hmm. Hallelujah. God is our vindicator. But the word declares that God is not only a vindicator. Revelation declares, and I'm only going to do half of it for now. God is the beginning. He is God the beginning. He is God the beginning. He is the one who inaugurated the creation of the world. He is the one who started the creation of man. We must understand today that the God who starts all things is here today. He is God, the beginning. Minister Sue said it during worship. God has the ability to start us all over again. Some of you have walked into the house this morning. You have come with the sins of this week. You have come with the trials of this week. You have come with all type of pressures on you. But God says this morning, in as much as I am God, the beginning, I am ready to start a new thing in your life today. God, the beginning. God, the beginning. God is about to start something new. God is about to do something new in your life. Something new in your family's life. He is God the beginning, God the beginning, God the beginning. So today, we're going we're gonna, to we're gonna tap into God the beginning for just a moment. And we're going to begin to call out, out of the pit, everything that is old in our lives. So we call today our children out of the pit. We call our sons out of the gangs. We call our daughters out of the prostitute houses. We call our children today out of the pits of hell. Today we call, we call, we call upon leukemia to leave. We call upon cancer to leave. We call upon diabetes to leave. Why? Because God, the beginning, he is here today and he wants to start it all over again. Come on. You see, we got to get prophetic about it. Begin to call for the new. God said, I will make all things new. God is our beginning today. He's our beginning today. Yesterday is gone, but today is a new day. And his mercies, they are new every morning. Great is the faithfulness of our God. God, the beginning, God, the beginning. Next time you're faced with something old, something from your past, something that comes to haunt you, declare God is my beginning. God is my starting point. God is the one who is taking me on this journey, this journey, this journey. It's a journey that we're on. God, whatever comes my way, I will trust you. God, the beginning, he's starting all things new again. God, the beginning, God, the beginning, somebody needs to start over today. This is your day to begin again, to begin again. Yesterday is passed away, but today God is in the beginning. God, he is here and he is your beginning point today. You can start afresh with God this morning. You don't have to walk into midday 
with yesterday's burden. Right now, right where you are, in the beginning, God. God is your beginning. But in as much as God is our beginning, yay, the Bible says that God is the beginning, but he's also the end. If he's the beginning, he's also the end. The word of the Lord declares that God is able. He who began a good work in me is able to complete it. He's able to complete it today. He's able to complete it today. Don't worry about what tomorrow holds as long as you're sheltered in God. As long as you're fortified, you can be sure that you're going to finish strong. You're going to finish strong. You may have started abandoned, but you're going to finish adopted. You may have started feeling neglect, but you're going to finish adopted. Today, God says, I am your ending. Do not worry about tomorrow because I, in the beginning, God, I'm going to finish you strong. You're going to be all right. You're going to be okay. I am the ending in your life. Hey! God, the beginning, but God, the ending. God, the beginning, but God, the ending. But it calls for perseverance. It calls for a spirit of endurance. It calls for a determination to keep on, keeping on. Because if not, we're going to fall. Yay! But we must, we must, we must keep our focus on and in and through God. The in the beginning God. Because we're going to finish strong. You may have started defeated, but you're going to finish victorious. You're going to finish victorious. You're going to finish victorious. You may have started broken, but you're going to finish healed. Come on. You may have started broken. All the pieces of my life, it may have been broken, but at the end of it all, I'm going to be healed. I'm going to be all right. You're going to be good. Stick with God. Don't let go. Don't falter. Don't shake. Don't faint. Because you're going to finish strong. You're going to be all right. Just keep on keeping on. Never worry about your ending in God. Because you're going to finish strong. You're going to finish strong. You're going to finish strong. You see, some people are worried about their finish. They're not sure. But today God says, I am your end. I am your end. I am your end. I am your end. God is our end. But God not only manifests himself as beginning, end, almighty, vindicator. God manifests himself as the vine. The vine. The vine. John 15 verse 5 declares that Jesus is the vine. He is the vine that we are connected to. He is the vine that we are supposed to be connected to. Unfortunately, today some people are connected to some wrong vines. They have found themselves connected to vines that are not God. But today God says, remember, I am the vine. I am the vine. We must understand today that it is important to be connected to God the vine. God becomes the root and the stem upon which we can depend. We can trust the vine called God. We can trust him because he's going to provide all that we need for life and godliness. Every nutrient, all the nourishments that we need is found in God, the vine. But we must stay plugged in. We must stay connected. We must stay in that place of the word and the, the prayer and worship because that is how we connect to God, the vine. We must connect to God the vine today. God is our vine. He is our vine. We wonder sometimes, oh Lord now, we wonder sometimes why it is that we're still cussing. But God, oh, we're not connected to the vine. We wonder sometimes why it is that we're thinking impure thoughts. Get connected to the vine. We wonder sometimes why it is we're always falling and we're faltering every step of the journey. Get connected to the vine. 
He is God, our vine. And I can assure you today, if you connect to the vine, this vine that is spoken about in John 15, 5, I am the vine. God says today that you will bear good fruit. You will be a blessing. You will receive blessings. This is the God that we serve today. But connect yourself to the vine. Food for thought. Food for thought. Connect to the vine today. God is our supply for all good things. For all that we need in life and godliness. But we must get connected to the vine. Why are we bearing such little fruit? Get connected to the vine. Why is it that I don't seem to be moving in my Christian journey? Take a temperature check on your prayer life. Take a temperature check in your worship before God. Take a temperature check hey, concerning your walk, your integrity, your honesty, your life before God and before men. You see, sometimes we want to come before God one way, but we go before man another. But God said, no, you're going to walk before me, and you're going to walk before men the same way. Come on, get connected to the vine today. Get connected to the vine. One of the other things and ways that I've seen God manifest himself And I'm bringing it down for a purpose. Is as God, the gentle whisper. He is God, the gentle whisper. Elder, I don't mind being loud. I don't mind shouting before the Lord. I don't mind having a good time and hooting and hollering. I don't mind having a good jump up and sit down. But I've learned to love the whispers of God. I've learned to love the whispers of God. After I've jumped and after I've sang and done my little jig jig, I want to know that when I sit in my seat or I lie on my bed, I can hear God say, I love you. Hey, the whispers of God. First Kings talks about, and you can read the story, I believe it's chapter 19, where there was wind and there was fire, but God came in the still small voice. I call them the whispers of God. Men, call me crazy if you want, but I like to hear God whisper to me. I like to hear him say, it's going to be all right. You're going to make it. You're finishing strong. You, you see, I've learned to depend upon the whispers of God. Do not fault me. Do not judge me when you see me sitting quietly in the presence of God. Because God is doing something in my life. And my encouragement to you today is learn to love the gentle whispers of God. His whispers that bring us life. His whispers. I'll tell you the truth, church. In many of the major moves of God in my life from one point to the next, it wasn't a ha-ha-ha-ha-hoo-hoo. -hoo. It was a Guyana. Grenada, Suriname. I didn't come through a big loud shout and a scream, but it came as a whisper. I want to encourage you today, learn to enjoy the whispers of God. His whispers. Some of us are looking for God to come through the ceiling, the angels to appear, the writing on the wall, the word of God to jump out when we read it. Well, I can tell you, Minister Allen has never had none of those experiences, but I've heard his whisper. I've heard his small voice. I've heard him speaking to me late in the midnight hour, early in the morning. I've heard him telling me how much he loves me and how much he desires me. And today God is whispering over you his love for you, his desire for you, his calling for you, his purpose for you. Learn to enjoy the whispers of God. 
And I would suggest in these times, it should be easy to detect the whisper. Because in the office, it's loud and cluttered. Yay. In the boardroom, it's noise. At school, at the university, confusion, noise in our ears all day. But when I get quiet, and he whispers, learn to love the whisper of God. Learn to love his whisper. God has spoken to some of the great men and women of God through whispers. Wake up in the night, and God whispered to me. I'm on my way to the office, and God whispered to me. Learn to enjoy his whisper. Learn to acknowledge and identify his whisper. God, the gentle whisper. When we fail to heed the whispers of God, we fail to be led. We must be led because we have acknowledged his whisper, his voice, the gentle whispers of God. But God is God, and he loves a shout. So God manifests himself not only as a gentle whisper, but God manifests himself as our song, as our song, as our song. Isaiah 12, 2 says, For the Lord Jehovah is my strength and my song. I'll tell you this morning, I've learned to live in the song of the Lord. I've learned to live in the song of the Lord. We must understand today that the Bible says the joy of the Lord is our strength. Let's say it together. The joy of the Lord is our strength. But one of the things we must acknowledge is that many, way, many times when God wants to bring joy, He'll give us a song. He'll give us a song. And I said to some folk, I came in from Grenada on Friday, and I was saying to them there, that one of the things I never want to lose is my song. I cannot afford to lose the song, God, my song. Because if I lose my song, I'm going to lose my joy. And if I lose my joy, I'm going to lose my strength. Therefore, I'm going to be weakened, and the enemy will try to make mincemeat of me. But I am determined today to sing the song of the Lord. You see, <laughs> Minister Allen, many people don't understand me. I'm unusual. Many times I don't fit the part. I don't look all pastoral. Yeah. But you see, I've learned, I've learned that God is much bigger than fluff. Okay? And what I'm saying today is that I've learned to trust God, my song. There are many times when I'm home, Minister Allen, he'll wake up in the morning and he's not going to get on his knees. But as I'm ironing my shirt, I'm so glad that I've learned to trust him. Precious Jesus, the Savior, he's my friend. I've learned to trust him. I sing before the Lord. Another time, I may be going down the road, and I'm singing, The joy of the Lord is my strength. The joy of the Lord is my strength. The joy of the Lord, the joy of the Lord, the joy of the Lord, it is my strength. Hey, you understand? And hear me well, Minister Allen. 
They are my prayers. They become my prayers to God. I may not have woken up and got on my knees and, oh God, today, oh God, but when I begin to sing before the Lord, when I begin to release my song, that song is my prayer. That song is my declaration. That song, that song, that song. I got to keep my song because it is my joy. And my encouragement to you today is to learn to know God as your song. When you begin to learn God as your song, your life is going to go to another dimension. You don't need so much to hype you up because you've got a song going on on the inside all the time. God, my song. God, my song. Hey, hey. You see, I'm old school. And as much as I acknowledge the know of God, I'm old school. So there's another time I may be going down the road, and I know some don't like this song, but I may sing, A mighty fortress is my God. Hey. A mighty fortress. A mighty fortress. A mighty fortress. When I sing that, I'm asking God. I'm declaring God around me. A mighty fortress is my God. Grandmommy taught me well. She taught me the songs to hold on, to ground me, to secure me. You see, many times when I'm facing the difficulties of life, yay, I'm going back to the songs. That, hey, 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 come on, Ingrid. <laughs> you see, we got to understand. We got to understand. In as much as we are embracing what God is doing, we must also understand what God has done. Come on. Lord, where am I going this morning? I don't know. But we must also understand what God has already done and acknowledge His goodness, acknowledge His greatness, acknowledge His power, acknowledge His ability in our lives. Learn to know God as your song. Learn to know God as your song. God, our song. Don't let the enemy steal your song. There are many mornings I wake up and I don't have a song. I begin to sing a song. Because I know once I have the song of the Lord, I'm going to make it through my day. God, hear what Isaiah said, God is my song. He is not a song, but he is my song. Learn to trust God as your song. This morning we have seen God displayed in so many ways. God our fortress. God our deliverer. God our vindicator. The God that is almighty. The God that is a gentle whisper. The God that is a song. And this God today, he's very present here this morning. And some of you have come in here this morning much like Daniel. You have found yourself in a den of lions. You know what that means. Some of you today have found yourself much like Joshua with the battle of Jericho. There are some walls that are forming around you. Walls of depression, walls of self-hurt, walls of suicide, walls of low self-esteem. Some of you have come this morning and you've found yourselves much like Noah, standing as that one righteous man in the midst of wickedness. And you're asking today for God the Almighty to step in. Some of you this morning, you have come and you have found yourself like the three Hebrew boys. Sometimes we do it on our own. Other times we find ourselves in a fiery furnace. But today God is saying, He is here. 
He's sovereign in the mountain dew. And he's sovereign in the ocean floor. He's with me in the calm. And he's with me in the storm. He's sovereign in our greatest joy today. But he's also sovereign in your deepest cry. He's with you today in the dark. You can be assured that this God, he's with you at the dawn. In his everlasting arms today, all of the pieces of your life, many times they flash before you. But from the beginning to the end, can you say today, I trust you, God. In his never failing love, God is constantly working everything for our good. God, whatever, 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 whatever comes our way today, can you this morning say, I will trust you? Today we have looked into the Word. We've taken a journey through history. We've considered the wonders of this God. The in the beginning God. But we must understand today that we can't or we don't want to only read and hear about Him. But God today, we want to experience you. We want to stand and see the deliverance of this God. We want to know the all-embracing power of this God. You've come this morning. You know this God, but you're ready to see Him manifest Himself in a powerful way in your life. As I was preparing this morning, I really felt the Lord saying that today is the day to call out for the families. I mean, what a mess. What a mess as we look around. Whose child isn't one, whose husband isn't one, and whose wife and who. But God says today, cry out for the families. The families. You see, when the family unit is broken, everything begins to collapse. But today God says, cry out for the families. And I'm sure this is almost all of us. But this morning, if you have a son or maybe a daughter, a nephew, a niece, They've found themselves in a deep, dark pit. A mother or a father. An auntie or an uncle. They're in a pit. And for some reason, no matter how much you've tried and you've tried and you've tried, you can't get them out. This God. The in the beginning God. He's here today, and we're going to call upon the name of the Lord. If you have some family member somewhere, and if it's all of us, well, we will all stand together. I'm going to ask you to stand. You've been crying, you've been wailing, you've been weeping, and you've been wondering, where is this God? This God today, He is here. He is here. Father, this morning in the name of Jesus, we call upon you today. Oh God, oh God, we call upon you this morning. 
Lord, we bring before you our sons and our daughters, our aunties and our uncles, our mummies and our daddies, Lord, our cousins, oh God, the nieces and the nephews. Lord, you see today the mess that they're in. But God, we extend our faith this morning. We raise our hands out to you today and we hold on to you as our God. And Lord, just as you worked in the life of Daniel and you moved in the life of Noah, God, and you tore down the walls of Jericho, this morning, oh God, we are travailing before you for our children, for our spouses, for our husbands and wives. Oh God, today, 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 oh God, we are calling upon our child. Come on, you call your child by name. Your mother, your father, your uncle. If God says today is the day for families, we extend our faith and we call out for families. We don't sit back and say, well, hey, I'll just wait and see. Now nah, put your hope in God. Lord, today we call them out of gangs and Lord, out of houses that they shouldn't be in. In the name of Jesus, we call them into Christ. Come into Christ today in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Father, today we are believing for a turnaround in the lives of our families. Lord, where husbands and wives have moved apart, bring it together again. Lord, where the children have walked away, we call them to return today in the name of Jesus. Oh God, where grannies and grandfathers don't know you, we call them today, come into Christ. We send out a warrant for your arrest in the name of Jesus. And we say, come, come, come in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. So today we lay claim on our family. And we say, come into Christ. You see, at the mention of God, things must come into order. When God steps into a picture, there is alignment. So as we connect to God today, this God, hey, we're looking forward to everything coming into order. In the name of Jesus, 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 every son, come home. Every daughter, we call you home today in the name of Jesus. We're not letting up our faith. We're not giving up easily, but we're holding on to this God that we serve, this in the beginning God. And we are looking, we're standing and seeing the salvation of our God. This God that we serve today, He is more than able to do exceedingly, abundantly, above all that we can ever ask, think, imagine, try to figure out. He's God. So today a child is not too hard. A husband or a wife is not too hard for God. We call them into order today. Before I close this morning, Two things I want to do. First of all, if there is someone here today and you have found yourself in a pit, in a prison, you know the Lord. You're serving God, but somewhere in you there is a God. Where are you in this today?
you're serving God, but you're still wondering, where is he? He's here. He's here. He's God in you, the hope of glory. And if this is you this morning, I'm talking about tough, difficult times, a circumstance that is seeming to cripple you. I want to pray for you today. And I want to ask you to come. I want to ask you to come. We cannot look at another man's circumstance and determine the measure of it. But each man knows in his heart what is going on today in his life. You see, many times we see people calling unto God and reaching out and shouting unto God. But Monday to Saturday, they're facing hell and high water. But today we want to pray, we want to pray, we want to pray. We want to call, we want to call upon the Lord. The Lord that says he will answer. The Lord that says if we call upon him, he will be the answer today. Hallelujah. 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 Today, I don't know the measure of your story, your situation, or your circumstance. But we don't serve a God that cannot see and cannot hear. Tao, the songwriter says, every other God is an idol, but this God that we're serving, he sees, he hears, he understands. You've come this morning, not because you just want to make a display, but somewhere in the deep, 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 deep crevices of your heart and your life, you're tied up, wrapped up, tangled up. And you're saying, God, where are you? God is here. God is here. God is here. He's mighty to save. Mighty to deliver. Mighty to set free. Mighty to give a turnaround. Mighty to give a breakthrough. If he did it before, he can do it again. Because he's God. He's God. And today, yes. That's right, sister. If he did it before, he can do it again. If it is your health, God is healing. If it is your finances, God has money. If it is your children or your family, maybe it's worse than we think. God is mighty to save. I like the look of this. You see, they're calling to God for themselves. Even before man lays hands, they're calling. Because we must understand that our call, it touches the heart of God. Hallelujah. 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 Yeah. He is a mighty God. He is a mighty God. He is a mighty God. There is nothing too hard, nothing too difficult. 
He's more than able to heal and deliver, to set free. God is able, He's mighty to save. He's mighty to save. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, in the mighty name of Jesus, every foe is defeated. Every foe is defeated. In the name of Jesus, we release the power of God to manifest in the lives of these God's children. We call to not today any strategy and plan of the enemy to discourage and to make despondent but we declare in the name of Jesus body of Christ as we link our faith together that this God the in the beginning God the God that created the heavens and the earth he's moving today he's moving in hearts today he's moving in minds this morning he's moving in lives today He's moving in children today in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 God sees your need. He sees your concern. He sees your burden today. And he said, cast all, all your cares upon me, for I care for you in the name of Jesus. There is nothing, there is nothing, there is nothing that is too hard for God. So today we call upon the name of the Lord. We say, Jesus, 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 hallelujah. He, he can move mountains. He can move upon the waters today. Yeah, hallelujah. In the name of Jesus, in every weak place, God be made strong today. In every weak place, God be made strong today. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, we cancel every plan of the enemy, every assignment from hell to destroy and to bring to not the lives of these people. But we declare today in the name of Jesus that every assignment, it is brought to zero. It is brought to naught in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Oh, he's mighty. He's mighty to save. He's mighty to deliver. He's a strong tower. He's a fortress. Oh God. Hallelujah. 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 In the name of Jesus. Today we increase our faith. We hold on to the promises of God today that are yes and amen. And we believe today in the name of Jesus that every good thing that God has planned for our lives it's going to bear good fruit we're going to begin to see the manifestation of the plans of God the promises of God in Jesus mighty name hallelujah hallelujah in the name of Jesus in the name of Jesus my God he's mighty to save He's mighty to save. He's mighty to heal. Listen clearly. The blood of Jesus is powerful. You see, one of the ways that God manifested himself is through Jesus. And oh, God knows today how much we needed Jesus. How much we needed him. For some of us were in a terrible tragedy but Jesus came and today we thank God for the shedding of his blood for the blood of Jesus is strong the blood of Jesus is powerful I've learned how to call upon the blood 
You see, the blood today, it is stronger than sickness. It is stronger than financial distress. The blood of Jesus, it is stronger than all types of ailments and insecurities. One touch of the blood and we can be made whole again. His blood, His blood, His blood, His blood is powerful. Today we declare the blood of Jesus in every situation, in every circumstance, in every trial, in the name of Jesus. For when the enemy comes in like a flood, our God, this God, the in the beginning God, He's going to lift up, raise up, establish a standard so that we cannot fall. We win and we win every time. Come on. I said we win and we win every time. In case you didn't hear it, I said we win and we win every time because of this God, this God, this God. Father, we declare today a supernatural manifestation of the power, the ability, the might of God in these lives, in these circumstances, in the name of Jesus. We declare divine order. What is out of alignment, we call it into alignment in the name of Jesus. What is broken, we declare restoration today. What is missing, we declare it is found in the name of Jesus. 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 So Father, we believe you today. We believe you today. God, I believe you. Let's say it together. God, I believe you. I believe you today. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. 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 Yes, Sharia. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Stand still and see the deliverance, the salvation of the Lord. As you journey through this Christian walk, Stand still and see the salvation of our God. Our God is awesome. He is mighty. He is powerful. God bless you as you return to your seats. There's one final call I want to make this morning. You've come into the service and you've seen this body of believers reaching out to God and holding on to this God, the in the beginning God that, that establishes himself as Lord over everything. But today you don't have a relationship with Jesus Christ. The Bible declares that God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever, that means you today, believeth in him shall not perish but have everlasting life. It is God's desire today that none perish but that all come to repentance. If this morning you don't know this God, you don't know this God, the Bible declares that when we were all sinners, Christ died for us. He shed his blood with you in mind. And maybe today you're in the service and you want to renew your commitment to God, or maybe you want to get to know Jesus for the first time. If you're here today, raise your hand so we can pray with you. 
Maybe there's one. Maybe there's someone today. Thank you, I see the hand. Is there another in the house this morning? Maybe there's one more. Today we're calling people to life. We're calling them out of darkness into life. Maybe just a moment more, there could be someone else today who wants to experience the power, the might of this God. Raise your hand today so we can pray with you. If you've raised your hand today, we want to invite you to come to the front. If someone near you raised their hand, be sure to walk with them. Sometimes it could be a long walk, but it's worth it. Hallelujah. Can someone check with the lady in the back? I saw her hand raised. Amen. As she comes, maybe there's another today that wants to say yes to Jesus. Give your life to him. Serve him with all your heart. The songwriter said, Jesus is the best thing that could ever happen to me. And today, we welcome you. We welcome you. We welcome. Come on, church. Let's welcome them as they come. As they come. You got to remember, we took this step. We've been there. We've done it. So we got to encourage those today who are taking this walk. Just before we pray, could there be another in the house this morning? You want to say yes to Jesus. Surrender your life to him. We know it's a battle. We know it's a struggle. But remember, you win in Christ. So we want to encourage you today to come. I encourage you to come to Christ today. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Is there another one? Is there another one? Maybe someone more. This is the last call for today. But thank God, his mercies don't end when the service does. Hey, you see, sometimes we're afraid to take the walk, but by the time we hit the car park, Jesus, I give you me. <laughs> so many people have come to know the Lord on their bedside, in their car, in the office. One last call. If you want to know Jesus today, this is your opportunity. Come now. Come now, come now, come now. Hallelujah. Amen. Well, we're so thankful today that you've come, that you've made the decision to serve Jesus. Serving Jesus has been one of the greatest decisions of my life. Oh, it's been quite a journey. But with him right there by me, I know I'm going to make it. And today, even as you have taken that step of faith to put your hope and your trust in God, He's standing right here with you. As a matter of fact, it was Him who brought you. Come on, it was the Holy Spirit who called you. And remember today that His mercies, they are new every morning. And His blood forgives every sin. One moment to go at your mention of his name is in the past, is history, is erased. The word says that if any man calls upon the name of the Lord, he is saved. And today we want to give you this opportunity to publicly declare your prayer to God and express to him how much you love him. How thankful you are for saving him. You may not understand it all, but you're thankful. 
Church, I want you to join with us as we say this prayer together. And I'm going to invite these two ladies that have come to say this prayer with us, making it your bold declaration. Let's pray together. Jesus, today I acknowledge you as Lord and Savior. I thank you for the cross. I thank you for your blood that cleanses me today and forgives me of every wrong. I accept your forgiveness. And Holy Spirit, I welcome you. Today, Lord, I serve you with my mind, my body, my entire being. I give it to you in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Amen.